It's 10 o'clock across the Delaware Valley, and a good morning to you. It's the Anthony Gargano Show, and we're brought to you by the Bet Park Sportsbook app. I'm so excited right now because uh, I have a dear friend of mine who joins me, and it's a reunion of sorts. And actually, <laughs> I, I love him to death. The great Johnny Marks here in studio at PHL. Well, Johnny, salt, pepper, ketchup. Fried onions, no mayo, but it's some, a lot of people like mayo on their cheesesteak. Uh, so <laughs> How the, many of these conversations did we have? The last time we sat next to each other on the air, I didn't have as much white in my beard. You didn't have as much white in your beard. It's been a long time. I have one. I think I had one. Yes, yeah, so I had one. She was only a baby. You only now had one. Now I have one. three. Yeah, Gianna was uh, was like a year old. You only had one. That's right. And now three. Now three. Yes. I had little peanuts, and now they talk like this, Daddy. <laughs> Anthony 14, Daddy. I'm like, who's this man in the house? Where's my bat? Oh, it's my son. Oh, it my happens God. quick. And, man, I, let, let me just say this. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you. It was a long journey getting here, and I'm proud of you, man. It's just awesome. Thanks, buddy. You got a great thing. Guys. Thanks, buddy. I, I Listen, I, we, we love each other. So, we, you know, we, you are one of these people that, the minute they meet you, it's impossible not to love you. Uh, everybody loves me, yeah. It's true. It's true. <laughs> you, had that, you had that way of you. It's funny because as, as much as you, can, you try to be irascible at times, <laughs> it's impossible for you because <laughs> what your true self comes out. I'm the nicest guy ever, for real, for people that, yeah. that, that know me. I'm a nice guy. Yeah, but um, yeah, man, I, I am like. What's life like for you? It uh, it's uh, broke, something like that. I, mean, I haven't worked in kind of know how it is. I haven't worked in three months. Um, yeah, life it's is tough. life is life, life is about. life is great. Life is busy. You would think that not having, uh, you know, not really having a full time job here the last couple months that I would have like oh I have plenty of free time. Man, I got three kids, so the days go by fast. It's wake up with them breakfast. Uh, pack the pack the lunches, drop them off at school. I got a two year old at home that's at home with me. So then you know, like I'm with the two year old, and it's lunch, nap, wake up from nap, go get them at school, and then dinner, and then bed. And it's like rinse, repeat, and it's great. I love it. I, I give you so much credit because if you have children, right? Johnny's right. It goes by in a blink, and so you want to spend this time. With them, like you bonds, like when you're, you know, nap time and, and changing diapers and, oh. and making dinner and, you know, all that stuff. These moments are such amazing bonding moments, right? Like, you know, when they look back at their childhood, you're going to be a big part of it. It's not like, well, daddy was working all the time. Right. And, and look, you know, this, this is the way life is, you know, you have to do that. But if you could spend as much time, because that time is a gift. It is. And, uh, I mean, and, and, man, my, this this last one here is is giving it to me right now. They're all so different, and you know yeah. this. And she is a tornado right now. She <laughs> is awesome. So I'm enjoying it, but you know what? Like, I'm And you're coaching? I'm coaching. Um, yeah, so both are on the same softball team, six and eight years old. Uh, so I'm coaching, which I wouldn't have been able to do before. Like when I, say, I know that was a big part of the reason why you left WIP. Yeah, I mean, like, could I have continued to do it? Yeah, but like you had said, and I talked to you about this, mm -hmm. that it's like, could you imagine not being able to go to your, your kids' games and practices and things like that? And it's not, it's not just like, I can't leave early on Wednesdays. You're on the air till 6 o'clock, you're on the air till 6 o'clock. I can't yeah. leave early on Wednesdays yeah. because it's softball. And it just grinded me to where I was like, can I do the, could I do this for another five years? And it's like, man, I don't want to miss these moments. So I'm, 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 I mean, I'm really happy with the decision, but now it's like trying to figure out what's next, and you know, that's where I am right now. Yeah, well, and, and listen, you know, full disclosure, we're going to do whatever we can to, to have you here because we, you know, we, lo oh. we love you, and you know that, and we've been through talking, and we'll see what, we, what happens. Like, th this whole new world of media, look, here at PHLY, we're just trying to find our place here. Like yeah. that, I mean... It, it's different, right? Like you consume it different. You can consume it live. 
You can consume it on demand. It's not radio. It's not television. It's a blend of everything, right? We have written content. We have stuff that you can listen to. You have stuff that you can watch, like this show. And it's kind of a meld and blend of everything. But it's kind of what I thought, which is it's going to be the future. Yeah. Like this kind of thing. You watch ESPN, you see Pat McAfee. That's kind of what, what this is. Yeah. What we're on a local end of it. Yeah. It's, um, and until you actually start doing it, you always have in your mind what you think it's going to be and what yeah, it's, it's going to be. But then, like, just organically, you kind of figure out exactly yeah. what the show is, the network is, what you all, all you guys are doing. But I know from everybody, and, and I know most of the people here very well, that it's a great group of people and a great group of hardworking people. And you guys, and if <laughs> it'd be great if I was a part of it, uh, you know, like, you, you figure things out and you have to do it organically. And I think so far, everything is great. This studio is great. You guys look great when you're doing the shows. It's, so It's a lot of fun. And, and you know, and we just scratch the surface. Like, you know, I, we, I, we're trying to figure out ways to, you know, we'll get phone calls up and, and so I can see Uncle Frank, you know, and, <laughs> and stuff. Like, we'll be doing stuff like that. Uh, but the journalism piece of it interests me too because that was my background, as you know, and so at times I want to take the show. If I can go get a sit down with, you know, Nick Nurse or Howie Roseman, I, I want to go take a camera into the office and write about it and, yeah. and, and you know, videotape a dinner. And I don't know, you and I go to dinner and, and go, you get salt, pepper, ketchup, and I get whiz wit with extra hot peppers. <laughs> like, we'll, we're going we're gonna to video it yeah. and then play it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you you did how many years do you do radio? So I since two thousand, I started two th January fourth two thousand. I was working at the Inquirer. I took a trip. I did the West Coast trip. Our Flyers writer, I think it was Tim Pinaccio, was yeah. needed all for the trip. It was over the holidays, so I did the. I love traveling, so I did uh, Vancouver. Edmonton, Calgary. So I covered the Flyers. And then I got back and it was remember Y2K? Like, oh, yeah. Oh God, the world. Like was it was like end. the panic. Like we were turning the world was going to 2000, right? So it was like, oh my God, <laughs> the phones aren't gonna work. Like nothing's gonna work, or whatever it was. It's computer, like it was gonna be like some insane thing. The end of the world was gonna happen. <laughs> so I had to get back home. And I'll never forget. Because I call my girlfriend, my then girlfriend, who's now my wife, Tamara. I call Tamara. I go, uh, yeah, I'm, I got to be. I'm st like stuck in Minnesota on the flight home from Vancouver, and I was flying home New Year's Day or New Year's Eve day because we had plans that night for to bring in New Year because it was going to oh, be like yeah. party like it's like it's Prince, it's a Prince moment, man. We're gonna party like it's ninety nine because the end of it the world's was. happening, right? <laughs> it's the apocalypse is gonna happen. So we were, so that's what was going on. And I'm walking through Minneapolis Airport the day before New Year's Eve day, and it was like December thirtieth, and I'm um, I'm walking in, my flight's canceled, and I get a text from my buddy Vinny or my phone call. And he's like, where you at? I go, I'm Minnesota. He goes, I'm in Minnesota. And I go, get it, where you at? I said, I'm gate C, whatever. And he's like, I'm gate C, whatever. So we meet, and then he's like, listen, I got a hotel room. I'm like, awesome, let's get beers. <laughs> and then we went and got a case of beer and then whatever, hung out. There you go. Yeah, that was my Y2K story. So it's a long way of telling you that I've been on the radio for a long time. Since then. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's it is for such like I I grew up wanting to do radio. I never thought I'd ever do anything but radio. And then when you realize Yeah, that, with your gifted voice, you uh, have the voice. Uh, uh. uh so but then you realize that like, you know what? Radio is not going to take me to the end, right? Like and as the world changes, but there really is the constraint of doing a 4-hour show where you have breaks that you have to take at certain times to where like you can't go off too much on right. this and you or that. Right, you and me, I have, the, I have a problem with talking. And you, you are a storyteller. As you just told that story right there, you're a storyteller, which for what they want with cookie cutter radio right now, which what works, is, yeah. is difficult. Uh, how many program directors would be like, and listen, 
They weren't wrong, right? <laughs> they weren't wrong. Right. But I would have, I don't know, like legs are baldy. God forbid baldy because you know you lived it. <laughs> and it's like blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, tell that story about you in Costa Rica. Oh, and man. all of a sudden, there's the, the wild monkeys coming down in the rainforest. What happened next, Baldy? Yeah. And and Baldy would give a good of a story as you would think he would. Yeah. I uh, real fast. I I Marcus Hades told me a story about you once, and it was when you were transitioning the radio, and he had said that everybody at the paper was happy that you were leaving because you were so much better as a writer, a feature writer than anybody else. And they were like, well, we're happy Anthony's leaving because he makes us look bad because he's such a good writer and everything that he wow. does. That means a lot with Marcus. Because Marcus is great. He's been doing it for a long yes. time. So yeah. it like, you know, you've we done We always bonded done over stories. Like, I love, like, honestly, truth, truthfully, that's my favorite thing to do. This is just fun. Like, to me, this is hanging out. Right. Like, you know, like, we, <laughs> we got a fridge full of beers if you want some. And VG stopped and got pretzels. Right, so and Jamie Lynch is out there on the couch. Well, I he's mean, coming in. He like we're gonna. <laughs> so coming up uh, at we're we're about about fifteen minutes because I do want to do some sports with you. Right. But in about fifteen minutes, we Jamie's gonna come in. So you might as well hang out and be making a reunion. Can he sit on my lap? Right. We can share no, the same we're gonna, right now. Look, we have the extra desk over here. All right, I'll we'll go over to the extra desk. No, 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 no. It comes no? together. Oh, it'll, right. it'll pull, oh, we'll gotcha, have a three. Gotcha. That's it. Yeah, it'll be it's easy. Like you know, boom, boom. Next thing you know, we'll we'll go to the transition everybody hates, because we have this transition now. You'll learn all about this stuff, right? So the transition, because the commercial breaks are different. Like we don't have traditional radio or television right. commercials. You have to do a transition. So you'll see my ugly mug, and it'll be like me showing the, like the, there's a city in the background, <laughs> and it's fun. It's cool. Like. Once or twice, but you see it like <laughs> ten times. People are like, "All right, enough of that thing." Right? You know what I mean? But you'll get to know all this, all these little ins and outs. Like, I still, I'm learning all about. I'm it. still not like I, I know I should be looking in the camera, but what camera? And then if I look up at the monitor, so I'm looking the one up. The three, and I, so that's, that's yours. The third that one, right? That's yours. So like, there you go. Like, like, look, it's a perfect shot. You look great. Right, look at Thank it. you, Dr. Glant. There you go. You can see right there. Yeah, Glant's a genius, man. Well, I mean, and here's the look, thing. Your hair looks looks phenomenal. Here's the thing I said to Dr. Glant. I'm like, well, like, why wouldn't you want to maybe be on a digital outlet where people can see what it looks like? Yeah, it does. It looks, I mean, not phenomenal. It looks great, buddy. This is the thinner side. But anyway, anyway, I digress. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> but no, but the, you, listen, I love to write. Like, that was always because you tell this incredible story. So when I was out. You know, it's doing my jail sentence, not allowed to work. <laughs> I, I I just wrote. I wrote screenplays and yeah, you know yeah. all that stuff. So and I write with crayons, so that's why we <laughs> we work because Dude, you know we're not the greatest moment. And when when Jamie comes, and I don't want to go four for four with you, uh, but when Jamie comes in, we got to talk about the gas station food. <laughs> the, one of the greatest hysterical moments was I go. Johnny, like, Johnny's like the gas station king. He knows Love every it. food item at like every 7-Eleven, Wawa, gas station, the gas station chicken, which would start it back when we were doing the show. At that Luke Oil. Yes. The famous Luke Oil on City Line Avenue where you can buy a bong, chicken, uh, <laughs> uh, rock salt. Like, 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 the guy tried to charge me 40 bucks for a bag of rock, rock salt because there was no rock salt. I'm like, 40 bucks for rock salt? It's a five-pound bag. You can buy it all, yes. Oh, yeah, everything. And I would get food from the Luke Oil occasionally. But you, we did a whole, like, tasting menu. menu we did. Of the gas station items. Delicious. Oh. I felt a twinge in my stomach. <laughs> we, we just mentioned it. I remember, for whatever reason. What did you like, the 7-Eleven, the taquitos? They were, oh, my. And that's just what I thought of, man. Like, I'm almost burping <laughs> it up. The taquitos, there was a burrito at the Luke Oil. You got to put it in the microwave. <laughs> and it comes out. It's so hot. It, it literally burns the skin off your head before you eat it. What else did we do? I, I also got some good food, too. But the, the, the gas station burger, for my money, 
is probably the worst item you can buy. Because yeah, that, yeah. that meat is No, no, that's... No. Is that meat? So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's no good on it's that like, one. It's like an Impossible Burger before the Impossible <laughs> yeah. Burger. Yeah, but it's not what it tastes like. No, right, it's not all the good ingredients of the Impossible Burger. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Hey, all right, before we get to... Because the bro will join us. Yeah. But I, I, I want to ask you, let's go four for four. State of four for four. People want to know your opinion. Yes. All right, let's start Phillies. You being a huge Phillies man, yes, I am. Let's let's go two and four. Are you? Do you have that? Oh my God! Again, slow start. Oh my God! Rojas can't hit. Trey Turner's already slumping. What, which where are you feeling? I, I feel like that, but I'm not. I'm not freaking out. Uh, you know, two and four. And by the way, fans. And this is where I, I think fans in the first two weeks of the year, two weeks of the season. So I've seen a lot of negativity towards the Phillies. Yeah. On social media, even even me being like. Yeah, like, all right, I get it. It's frustrating to watch, but like, you don't go nuclear after they're exactly. one and two or one and three to start the season. This is a good team. This is, a, I don't think they're winning in the 90s this year. I, I don't think they have the starting pitching to win in the 90s this year. Um, I think they're an 88, 89 win team that'll be in the playoffs. That's dangerous What's your once they make the playoffs. Fear, the, the rotation or rotation the, as a whole is good. Yeah, because I, I, mean, I think Ranger has a monster season. I mean, I, off to a good start. I I think Nola's they have a one clear one with that Zach Wheeler and yeah. then they have a three three four five. To me, they had a hole in their rotation. I love what the Braves did with Chris Sale because yeah, at yeah. least you get a, he, you you get upside from him. Mm -hmm. um, and they didn't give up a ton to get him, so they improved themselves. Listen, this is a really good team. As we've seen in the playoffs the last couple of years, it comes down to matchups and how you're playing at the end of the year. So the. I think they breeze to the playoffs, and there'll be stretches where we're like, oh, man, like, are they, they going to fall apart? And yeah. there's going to be stretches where you're like, wow, like they're, they look like they could win the World Series. Um, and when I say a, a, like, a, like issues with rotation, not major issues. They have Zach Wheeler after so all. So basically the top for you, rotation. it's more null. It's Would null. you have signed them? Not to, no, not to, no, not to that contract. See, the only problem with them is uh, you, you, when you say that, and I get it, but when you look at what's out there and you look at kind of his comps, you turn around and, you know, after the season's over and he, he eats up those innings he and does. he gets you a lot of strikeouts and he pitches you, you know, decent, you know, those kinds of games where he gives you six, I think it's a seven. safe. I think it's a safe contract. L right. last, last year, there, I think I was looking this up the other night. He went all the way to September, I think, where he only had one start. He didn't go five innings or six innings. That's really important in a rotation. If you go five, six innings, seven innings every start – Killing your bullpen. I, I mean, it's a, early on. I would say the first three or four years, it's safe. But uh, all right. So the next four years, here's what I would bet with Aaron Nola: that you get one really good year, you get two average years, and you get maybe a year like last year, which to me was below average. He was very good in the playoffs. His ERA, yeah, and his velocity. And we remember we were panicked. Yep. His first he, start in the playoffs, we were panicked. Well. He pitched great. But the velocity is going to go down. It's not going to go up. And what he shows is when he doesn't have command on his fastball, he relies too much on, on the off-speed pitches, and guys sit on it, and he gives up a lot of home runs. Yeah. I don't think that's going to get better with age. And, that, and that's my only thing. I, I, don't, I, I still think he's a good pitcher. He's an above-average pitcher. But you, it's, not a, it's not a large average salary no, it, it's just a, they yeah, spread I mean, it out. If you want to call him a you know a two minus, like you have an ace, you have a one, you know maybe he's not a high level two, but you know, and then and like who knows with Ranger? Like Ranger has upside. He does. I mean, I, I like Ranger in the playoffs too. He can pitch out of the bullpen. Yeah. He can make he can make quality big starts like this team. I mean, and, then, and then Sanchez Turnbull, who knows. Sanchez is I, I like Sanchez a lot. Turnbull is fine as the number five starter. There's a reason why they were chasing the the Japanese pitcher and they yes. were and they were trying to uh, Dombrowski wanted another starter. He just yeah, realized agree. he wasn't getting it. Yeah. And also Jordan Montgomery and Snell didn't get long term contracts. It's it's odd how the Phillies paid almost top of market for Nola, but yet these other guys mm -hmm. that no, that's a great point. But they're also I mean Jordan Montgomery could have a five ERA this year, and who knows with Snell? Yeah, so. yeah, because he's a wild card himself. Yep. Uh, it beads back. Did, were you on in favor of bringing Joe back? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he wanted the. He I don't I don't know what I don't know what happened with his return game because it didn't look like he was going to play, and then maybe he decided he was going to play uh, as Joe. You know before. him? No, I know, and, that, and that's Flair what I, for the dramatic. That, that's what I the said. Beast. That's 
it's what I said to people was that that were like, oh, well, he ne- may not be back until the playoffs, or he may not come back at all. He was coming back, and he was coming back before the end of the regular <laughs> season. Is he ready? I don't know if he's totally ready. He's 100% healthy, but he's going to play. Um, so it's just, honestly, even for people that, that don't like Embiid, if he stays healthy, at least you feel like you've got given the season a fair shot. You know, like to where, like, if they, if they lose in the second round this year, can you really be mad after he just came back? And mm-hmm. like, you're going to be, you're going to be disappointed. But like, I just, I just want a fair shot with a real roster and a real coach. Yeah, it was funny. Somebody hit me on like social media where I'm talking, <laughs> <laughs> you get raked. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be, to be, and spacing and this and that. I'm going all this stuff because I'm an unabashed and bead fan. And I get the injury and I get. You know, sometimes body language or whatever you want to, you know, say. But the fact that he's so good, right? So, so good. You know, goes to the line 12 times, 12 for 12. 12 for 12. Like, that creates so much space on the floor. So, whatever, I'm making all my case and the whole thing. He's like, yeah, and that's all good. And Sixers will lose again in the second round, and it's Groundhog Day. Yep. And he'll he'll come up small in big spots, and he'll – Act like he shouldn't after the playoffs, and he'll he'll and and he does all that stuff. He spook he spooked by it. I don't know what it is. To your point, he is so talented. You have to try to figure it out until until it's obvious. We got to get him. It's time to move on for both parties, he, or he forces his way out. You got to go. Keep going back to the drawing board. This is once in a lifetime talent that we're seeing in the city. Yeah, once in a lifetime talent. And yeah, it, it would. It would really, really be disappointing if you didn't get something from that. Even if, you know what, Anthony, if they made the Eastern Conference Finals, I would feel really good about that. I agree. You got, listen, I, I hear you. You got to get past the second round. Got to get past the second yeah. round, and you're not going to make anybody happy. There's just excuses every year for it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, after a while, like how many times it's the, you know, Charlie Brown with the football. And, and I, I don't know how you feel about Daryl Morey, but. His attitude of well, what do you mean? We no one looked at the Sixers as a real contender before I got here. No, and now yeah, the Sixers yeah, no, are, no, 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 are no. a contender. Like, what yeah, are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. You were supposed to put them over no. the top, Daryl. No, yeah, no, no. And no. if anything, they've went backwards. Yeah, no, 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 no. no, no, no listen, I agree with you. That does not. That doesn't cut it. No, your whole point was they were a contender. Sure, right? they were a truth. They were a true contender, and you know the eel comes in to win a title. I mean, that's just what it is. Doc I mean, was, I, and you got paid in a big way. Big time. So you, you got to own that. that. I mean, Doc was brought in because Brett Brown wasn't good enough. He needed to put him over the top. Yeah. He failed. And then, you know, Daryl fires him. Daryl, you were brought in because you were supposed to be the Pat Gillick of the Phillies. Ed Wade built it. Pat Gillick finished it off. Boom, win a World Series. And then and they went backwards. So it's. I will say this, though. The He had to do hard. You had. You you had Simmons. There was there, there was nobody else you were getting from him. Like there was no Halliburtons and all. From what I'm told, you had to do the Harden thing, right? Like that was your best option. And I, I was all for it. I was you know throwing a party. And here's why well, I was too. I mean, but, but here's why. Like you took a shot, right? Like and if he has the shame of it is he's Harden and Game Six last year he's Harden, right? Like if he just plays. Decent, not even great. If he just plays decent, God, when he falls apart, it's so bad. It is. His body language it's is terrible. terrible. He, he quits on the floor. Oh my God! And you hate him. Legs but, said the same thing. We were talking. Legs and I were just talking about that. And if you, but if you look at two of the games in that series, he pretty much carried him and won the game. For exactly. Him. So if he's oh just God. decent in Game Six, they win. The Celtics were trying to give you the they game. Were. Yep. So I can't kill Maury because. That could have worked. They were right there. Yeah. That could have worked. They were right there. You know? So, and I agree. Listen, and I kind of like the fact that at the end of the season, and by the way, look, he gets, he drafts Maxi, and Maxi. He drafted Maxi. That's the star. Now, I'm not telling you, I would have drafted Maxi because I look at a Kentucky player who's undervalued, right. especially during that COVID year. It, but look, he did it. We talk, we complain about, it. we complain about, you know, Bridges and with how foolish they did it. Well, more he did, drafted them and, and it, did it, it. It's a great draft pick. They need – see, it, and to me it feels like that this is setting up to his his last hurrah is all the cap space and he's trying to get Paul George. 
Yeah, like like yeah, he, yeah like, like that's yeah. Cl- clearly what he's doing right now. And it's yes. I mean it's it's a it's a, it's he's swinging for the fences, and it may may or may not work, but that's his best. He's got the cap space. He's going to go out there, whether it's a sign and trade or he signs somebody. You're going to have another star here. Yeah. No. No. And listen, it's kind of fun where you're going to go. You'll have him beat a maxi, and then you fill in the roster. Yep. I mean, that's a pretty cool thing. All right. Let me keep running the gamut. And birds. So what? I listen to you. So I, I, you know, but you know, just for the audience, how do you feel now, knowing you're going back with Sirianni? Like, I, I, I'll hit you with this. They, they have to. He's got to have a tougher camp, and they have to practice. They they ran out of gas. And you talk to people inside, and they go, at the end, they ran out of gas. Yeah. And they, that's an important – that's the thing that he needs to change. Um, I mean, I, I kind of feel helpless with Sirianni as the, as the coach. And honestly, it's a, t- it's a really tough spot for him, too, because every- – all the focus is on him. So if they don't win, no, they, yeah, they lose in the second round of the playoffs. It's everything's going on him. And you know how this fan base is. And it feels like right now the fans are just ready to pounce on him if something goes wrong. And the fact that they brought in an offensive coordinator with his own offense, give me the comp of an offensive head coach that was a coach that was hired as an offensive coordinator that has nothing to do with the offense, essentially. And you saw why after last year. I mean, it was it was bad. Uh, but like the one thing that I yeah, we, why didn't he take the play call? Like I keep going back to it and go. I don't think he was allowed to. But like I look at I look at what happened and it's a disaster, and Brian Johnson clearly couldn't do it. You, he's got to take the play call. I I don't know how you don't unless how he's just saying that no no you know let him keep it. But um, so now he he doesn't have as much control at least when. Like you had said, Sean McVay, you know, he's hired because he's a he's a genius. He's an yeah. offensive genius. No Shanahan. one ever, yeah, yeah, exactly. For their scheme, for getting guys open. No one ever no one's ever saying that that's Nick Sirianni. But the one thing that he did, guys played for him. And his message got across to those teams. They played for him and they played hard for him. He's got to get back to that. Yeah. He's got to get back to I that. I like him. I, I mean, I, I think, do too. I, I like the guy. So I, I root for him. I want to see it. You know, obviously, if he does well, the Eagles do well. But, you know, we'll see. Like, the whole thing's going to be – he, the quarterback also has to play so better. So, you took the words out of my mouth. I, and I give Jalen Hurts a, a mulligan for last year mm-hmm. at the end of the year Agreed. because of the – a little bit because of the injury, but because the offense was just, was just so pathetic. But he was spooked. He was looking at that rush. He was looking at the line. Dude. He was spooked. Ah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Baldy and I watched – we break down all the film, right? And there are times when he's leaving the pocket for no reason. Nope. There was no subtle movements. He just bailed. When at the end of 2022, he developed so well as a passer in 2022. His protection was good, but he would step up in the pocket and he would make confident throws. And I I, I, I loved it and I raved about him because I didn't think he was that kind of No, I didn't either. He didn't do it's it last the, year. It's the biggest conundrum, right? He's up. He goes against the Chiefs. And Spags, right? Like that. The, you know, he's better than Mahomes. I mean, it was unbelievable. He's throwing dimes. He's handling Spags' pressure. I was like, wow! I didn't expect. It. He played the game of his life in the Super Bowl. He was at Nick Foles against a, a more harrowing defense. Yep. And all that stuff went away last half of the season. I mean. You look at that Bills game. He was unbelievable at the end of the Bills game, going back and forth with Josh Allen. The yeah. season was was somewhat uneven before that, but still, he was in the MVP conversation. He was an MVP top three odds guy. But then it just fell apart. And I'm telling you, I don't have to tell you because you just said you were breaking it down with Baldy. He was sensing pass rush. He wasn't mm. stepping up in the pocket. He wasn't moving around in the pocket. Right. He would just, he's That's like, right. oh, I, I sense pressure. Let me roll out. That's right. And he's not looking downfield. He's not seeing the field well. I mean, he was missing guys that were open. And and that's the other thing. Like, if Jalen Hurts mm. is playing better and he's seeing the field better, maybe the offense doesn't look as bad. And maybe if he's a part of a run game. Yeah, I, I, I wonder if it was the injury or he made the decision, a lot like Donovan did, where I'm getting injured. And like the, the natural progression of, a, of an athletic quarterback that runs is to run less, especially when you're getting injured. And he was injured the previous two years at the end of the year. Yes, he was. But the, I also like the Eagles also talked about going into the season last year that he's a weapon in the running game, and we're not we're going to use him doing it. He, and he and he kind of sh- and they didn't do it. Nope. And and they went away from the run. Yep. 
and that was a problem for that offense. Yeah, the, the, the Eagles' offense, and I and I I think the moves that they made, and we'll say see, see how great Saquon is, but they really need to run maybe more than some of the other teams. Yeah. Jalen Hurts isn't a guy you want throwing to fifty times a game. No, and and also for Jalen, you want to get him windows to throw. Correct. So you want to move him like he's got to move. He's not. Oh, listen, he's not Flacco, right? Like he's not going to just <laughs> like one step slide. He, you got to move him to get windows to throw. I mean, that's just the bottom line with and, him. And here's the other thing, and it's it's the off the field stuff. And I don't know if there's something going on with him and AJ. I had I had yeah. heard that I had heard that AJ and Jalen's relationship during the season wasn't necessarily great. But the and I don't think he was meaning to be like this. But every time you would get a camera shot of him on the sideline, he's sitting by himself. Now, when they're winning, that's just stoic Jalen. Like, oh, look, they tied the game with a field goal. He has no reaction. That's so cool. That's my quarterback. When they're losing, it's a problem, and he doesn't talk to the team. But the whole team looks to Jalen Hurts. When you're losing games and you can feel the season falling apart, that's when he needs to step up as a leader. So, And you know what? I think he realizes that. He's a smart guy. Yeah. I, I, and, and the yeah. guys love him, but they're also – Hey, what's going on with him? Like, yes. why doesn't you know? Like, it doesn't mean yeah. they don't like him, but there was yeah. some talk. I'm it sure it was about different him. than Donovan. Like Donovan, there yes. was a real division. They were like, "Yo, dude, you know." There's no division with Jalen. It's kind of like, well, he just got that big contract. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. not talking to us at yeah. much. Like, he's kind of pissed all the time. Yeah. And he's probably angry with the offense and yeah. and what was going on with it. And he's and annoyed. Also, I mean, like you, you know, the Brian Johnson. You know, that was a big. He was. They were very close. Right. That couldn't have been easy. And it was not. Right, and you saw what happened with Steichen, and when he when he left, that was a big deal. Big deal that we didn't account for. Yep, yep, I'm with you. Stay right here, would you? I'll stay here. Don't go anywhere. I won't. Johnny Marks hanging out. I freaking love it.